Parks and Wildlife, Freestone Aquatics, and Right Water Engineers, all of whom uh, uh, were generous uh, underwriters of the uh, rendezvous and uh, particularly uh, appreciate their willingness to support us even as the format shifted from uh, the expected in-person meeting back in spring to a digital format now. Um, I uh, did want to also just uh, sort of let everybody know in terms of format. Um, uh, as we get started here, uh, we will be muting everybody's lines. Um, but uh, if you have questions uh, for our presenter as we go along, please use the chat feature. Um, if you pull up the uh, menu down at the bottom, there's a uh, box for chat that you can click on and it will open up on the right side so you'll be able to uh, enter your comments to share there. Um, so uh, appreciate the you taking part and uh, before we get started with our uh, with our speaker I uh, wanted to briefly share a video from one of our sponsors uh, from uh, Freestone Aquatics Sorry, can everyone hear this? Sorry. Yeah, slight. Could be a little louder, Annie. Okay, thank you. That's what the Fraser looked like before the project. That's good. That cannot sustain aquatic life. No. Um, see how, how wide, wide the water open, spread yeah. and, and these rocks heat up and that water heats up. flows are low, then it gets pushed into this inner stream channel where it remains completely healthy. So we have a healthy wide spring channel and a healthy narrow low flow channel. To bid on this project, Clint was one of the bidders. And what our interview process was, was more to learn about their philosophy and stream channeling work rather than their uh, price. You could build rock dams and have deep holes yep. full of fish. This has really nice holes with obviously nice fish because you yep. caught some of them. Couple. The holes though are kept at a proper depth to move sediment. The deep holes hold sediment. Collect. So so Clint does build holding water for trout but he builds it at a depth where sediment can continue to move. Uh, another thing that he does exceptionally well, we found nice fish but we didn't have to fish what looked like a pond. Sorry, our thanks to, uh, to uh, Freestone as one of our sponsors for this year's Digital Rendezvous. And now we will kick off our program for tonight, tonight uh, uh, State of Colorado Trout Unlimited. Uh, speaker, of course, is CTU's uh, president, Matt Moskal, a financial planner by day and a conservationist uh, by, by day and night. Uh, so Matt, take it away. Hey guys, thanks, David. Um, I'm going to, uh, to do my best also to, to share my, my screen here in a second. Um,
Got it. Looking good. Okay. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, for those that I have not met, uh, as David mentioned, my name is Matt Moskal. I have the honor of serving this organization as the, the Colorado State Council. Um, how nice to see so many names and faces that we're all very familiar with. Uh, the whole crew gathered tonight and then some, some that we may have not uh, yet met. So, you know I, know, I know many of you have been working all day or sitting through endless Zoom calls or, um, or maybe spending time with, with grandkids. So, you know, just know that we at, uh, at CTU very much appreciate taking, you taking the time to join us this evening um, and hopefully you've taken a look at, at the rendezvous schedule. We have some pretty fun stuff coming up. You know, we're going to cover everything from, from native trout to abandoned mine reclamation to stream management plans, um, and even some policy advocacy, which, uh, has been a bit of a feather in the CTU cap of late. Um, and, you know, I hope we, I hope you guys are looking forward to it, um, as I am. Um, so over the next hour or so hopefully i can keep it keep it as quick as possible but uh it's been difficult i'll be honest with you um but over the next hour i'm essentially going to just brag about how awesome we are i mean really that's what it comes down to um i'll share some of our successes over the past fiscal year um i'll then just give some detail around the current state of trout unlimited and, and, and what we're excited about going forward and some opportunities we see as well as a variety of pitfalls that we should probably avoid. Um, and then we'll just leave some time for, for discussion at the end where uh, staff will join me and we'll just be, we'll just be an open book for, for any questions um, that you all might have. And you know, since I don't know every name on the call, I guess I should just uh, send a quick hello to folks that might be tuning in I don't know from out of state or might not yet be TU members. Um, you know, if there's a silver lining to this COVID crisis, um, it's the fact that we can utilize technology to reach folks that might uh, not have been able to join us at Hotel Colorado, where we have convened in the past. So, um, you know, to you folks, I, I hope I hope you uh, enjoy the coming two weeks and you find them informative. And and if you have any questions. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly or, um, you know, if you just want to learn more about the organization, coloradotu.org will have everything you need. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's unfortunate to not see everyone in person, but, you know, here's hoping that this digital format allows you all to remain safe and healthy during one crazy time, right? Um, but uh, thank you again for everyone for joining us. It's good to see everybody. Um, so let's let's hope I don't you know screw this presentation up here. But um, Colorado Trout Unlimited is first and foremost its people, from the executive committee to to chapter leadership to the individual members. Um, and I guess I wanted to take a, a moment to introduce the folks of the executive committee. <laughs> Uh, all of these characters make this very well-oiled machine run so smoothly. Basically, they tell me what to do and I do it. Um, but all of these smart people are, are similar to you in that um, they donate their money, they donate their time, uh, they donate their, their subject matter expertise. And uh, uh, we couldn't be more grateful to, to, to them for, for taking uh, the time every week to serve Colorado Trout Unlimited and it's uh, increasingly important mission as we will, we will see. Uh, but I did want to publicly thank these characters because um, I get to spend uh, more time with them than you all do. Um, however, that being said, uh, the folks that really get things done um, kind of behind the scenes or maybe at the, at the forefront of the mission are our staff, our state staff. And I, and you know, it's tough to, inter to, to interact with these folks in the COVID times, and some of you may or may not know them. So I wanted to briefly just introduce everybody that, that has such a hand in what we're involved with. Um, Shannon Kendall is our development director. I believe she's going on something like eight years with CTU. Um, some of you may, may know Shannon. 
she truly provides the fuel for us to be able to operate and achieve our mission. And we could not possibly ask for a better uh, liaison between CTU and our donors and partners. So we're, we're very thankful to have her on board. Uh, David is celebrating his, what, 26th anniversary, I believe it is. David, I can't see your face. You're not up on the screen right now, but um, David's a huge reason why we have. Between, yep. What's that? Between CTU and National TU, 26, yep. Good man, good man. Um, yeah, and, and David, as much as I hate to give him credit, he is a huge reason why we have such clout around town and around the state. Um, I, I honestly, I, I have not come in contact with anyone that is more knowledgeable, <clears throat> excuse me, more knowledgeable about, uh, you know, the, the challenges and the inner workings of cold water conservation in Colorado than David. So we're super lucky to have him. Uh, don't tell him I said that though. Um, Dan Omasta is our grassroots coordinator. He's completing our water leaders course uh, currently. I don't know how far along he is right at this point, maybe halfway through or something like that. Um, but the water leaders course is a water education Colorado course that's extremely rigorous and, ex and, and very prestigious. And he brings some of that knowledge back to CTU. So we're fortunate to benefit from it. Um, and Dan is in charge of chapter support. So, you know, chapter leaders that are on the call tonight, I would encourage you to reach out to Dan if you haven't connected him with connected with him in the past. Um, he's an okay guy. He actually, he'll be nice to you, I promise. Um, so I wouldn't hesitate. Um, Annie is our communication and, and memberships coordinator. Uh, she keeps us afloat. Um, I thought I was, I was technologically astute till I had a few conversations with her and I was like, wow, I'm an idiot compared to you. So uh, we're thankful to have her on board. Um, anything that's uh, content oriented, social media, anything that you receive in your email inbox, uh, those are going to originate from Annie. So we're obviously, you know, we're, we're, utterly useful, useless without her. So we're glad she's around. Um, Jen Bolton is our legislative liaison. She has had a quiet couple months, I'll tell you what, with, with, uh, with COVID being the primary focus at the Capitol building. Um, you know, Jen has, has been a little bit on pause, but she's been with us for, geez, Jen, I, I, don't, even, I don't even know how long Jen has been with us, probably similar to, to David at this point. <clears throat> um, but she provides recommendations on what we should or should not support at the Capitol building. And she, like David in the inner workings of conservation, has a knowledge of the inner workings of, uh, of legislation at the Capitol building like nobody's business. And the newest addition to our family, I, I need to be able to like see your faces. Something is messed up with my, on my end here. Um, but Jeff Elliott is uh, our newest, uh, newest addition in the youth education coordinator position. Jeff, I haven't talked with you since you spent a weekend with my friend Thomas Burke, and I'm sorry you had to go through that. But uh, uh, we're glad to have uh, Jeff in this position. I'll tell you, when we went through, these inter through this interview process, we had literally hundreds of applicants. And as I mentioned to our executive committee in our last meeting, there was a few echelons. There were, there were the really high quality, and there were many high quality applicants. We'll put them at the third echelon. And Jeff Elliott was at one. So we were, we, he was truly above and beyond any other applicants that we had. Uh, the opportunity to interview with. So we are, uh, uh, it, it, needless to say, thrilled to have him on board because we see so much opportunity for growth in the youth education um, position. So that's us. That's everybody at uh, XCOM and, and staff level. But now let's get into some of the, the meat of things. Um, I want to start just by, by zooming out a little bit. Um, Colorado, Trout Unlimited in Colorado, is, is very unique. We're now boasting nearly 14,000 members and membership is consistently growing year over year. We have, as I mentioned, six full-time staff members and roughly 20-ish um, full-time staff within the state. And David, if I say something incorrect, just jump in and correct me when, if I'm wrong. Um, but I have to say that I, I didn't I never really realized what we have in the state until I attended a national rendezvous in Arkansas. And there I had a chance to meet with other, other leaders um, around the nation and sort of compare and, com and contrast what other states are, are working on. And what I realized is that tr Colorado truly has everything that the TU mission is focused on. 
Um, now let me expand a little bit on that. In Denver, we have this we have this population explosion, right? We're all aware of the front range explosion. Um, and it means a few things. It means first and foremost, that we are now stewards of, and the primary stewards of what is arguably the most stressed watershed on planet earth in the Colorado river. So upholding our end of the Colorado water plan, which we'll get into in a little bit more detail in, in, the, in the coming minutes. Um, and acting as, as a voice for the health of watersheds via various stream management plans and basin roundtables, and just having that true uh, chapter level vigilance um, becomes uh, hypercritical going forward. Um, but the large population of Denver also provides us with the opportunities to engage a greater number of donors, engage uh, a, a greater number of new members and more partnership opportunities um, that, that other states in the West might, might not have uh, th that, that same luxury, right? So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. <clears throat> uh, but we also have this huge pool of young people that we can, that we can touch through our, our youth education programs, which is, which is a critical component to, to the longevity and the sustainability of Colorado Trout Unlimited. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, so uh, you know, in addition to those things, we have both a legacy of mining and native trout on top of it all. So, so the, our mining legacy makes us um, sort of a, a primary or a focus area for abandoned mine reclamation from a, from a national standpoint. And then our native trout, um, you know, we, we have this unique variety of, of trout species that exist nowhere else in the world but our mountains. So, so you know, who, who, who better to oversee their reintroduction than us? And, you know, what I'm getting at at the end of the day when we zoom out here is we have both an enormous opportunity, but also uh, we have to expect that Colorado is going to continue to throw challenges our way, and we need to be ready to to step up to all of them because we really are the the front lines um, when it when it comes to when it comes to some of these some of these issues. Uh, give me a second here. So what's been up? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, over the past fiscal year, uh, we have had an incredible amount of success, and there's. There's honestly so much to discuss that when I was starting to put this presentation together, I realized that my biggest cha challenge was just distilling down what to discuss tonight. So please, if I if I don't mention you or your chapter, um, just know that you don't you don't go unacknowledged. There's there's just there's just so much going on that it's impossible to touch everything. Um, but I do want to acknowledge um, our past leadership in the form of former president Cam Chandler and former treasurer Joel Evans. Joel Evans. Um, these, these two gents are the reason why we are in such good shape financially currently, um, along with Shannon Kendall, of course, who makes all of this actually come to fruition. Um, so we're feeling extremely fortunate. But uh, you know, Cam and Joel had, had the foresight to build up a cash reserve that has allowed us to, to not only make it through this COVID storm uh, incredibly effectively, um, but uh, uh, and, you know, without any layoffs, without any, any furloughs or anything of that nature, but we've actually uh, been fortunate enough to add Jeff Elliott in the youth education coordinator position. So um, you know, we, we can't thank, you stand on the shoulders of giants as it were, you know, as the saying goes, and um, I think it really it really makes sense in this regard. We've been set up over time in 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 an, in an incredibly fortunate position, um, which has allowed us to hire Jeff in the youth position. And why you might ask? Well, I'll tell you why. Um, we're absolutely crushing it as far as as far as the youth youth education component goes. Um, I'm stealing this from Annie's annual report. Um, but uh, you know we've had we've had terrific success and engagement in youth ed. Um, I was I was in Summit County uh, I want to say probably two months ago, and uh, I was hiking to an alpine lake where 
I thought I was the only one that knew that there were a bunch of huge cut cutthroat trout up there. And uh, when I when I got to the lake, <clears throat> I encountered four uh, rambunctious, I don't know, 13 to 17 year olds, I want to say something around there, um, four of them. And they were just, they were absolutely bombing casts into the, the middle of this giant lake. And, and I, I got to the point that I think I was self-conscious. I just, I just sat down and watched these kids. Um, and, you know, my first thought was, you know, thankfully they're not sucked into an iPad as so many of us tend to be, but they're in the middle of the backcountry hunting cutthroat trout. And I wondered like, you know, who are these kids? And as they walked by, I said, Hey, have you guys ever heard of trout unlimited and before i could even finish my sentence i noticed two kids had tu hats on and when i opened that conversation up they just they could not stop yelling about about how much they love tu and i thought to myself you know that is that is the mission of, of the youth education position right we're, we're, we're getting these kids to fall in love with these streams so they become stewards one day so we can replace ourselves because if we do not do that, then nothing that we do today means anything. So we're laser focused on that as, as far as an initiative. And we're thankful to have Barb Luno uh, uh, chairing again. And as usual, the Headwaters Committee for I don't even know how long. <laughs> um, but she's, she's definitely not allowed to leave at this point. Um, and we also have uh, Bianca McGrath Martinez to thank for laying such a solid groundwork um, for our now full, full-time staff, Jeff Elliott, to just run with this program and really focus on, on you know, the stream of engagement and, and just fostering that next generation. I'm trying to watch my time because I get excited and I start talking about things. So I got I to gotta be sure I, I don't go overboard. Um, uh, okay, so Trout in the Classroom, another huge success. And I'll try to blaze through this. I wish I could tell you more stories about it, but um, bottom line, we hit 12 schools in 2019, 17 tanks, and I have heard personally from these kids how much, uh, how much an impact uh, this makes on their lives. Uh, you would be astonished at how attached some of these kids get to, to this project and how they learn about, uh, you know, habitat and ecosystems along the way. Um, another spectacular program that we will continue to grow when things go back to normal. Um, Stream Girls, another another favorite of mine. Um, we th we have Occidental Petroleum to thank for it, and of course Barb Luno, who really kind of drives that ship. Um, but we've built a very strong partnership with Girl Scouts over the years, and in 2019 we reached 120 uh, Girl Scouts, um, ages nine to 14. Um, and much of these youth initiatives have been have been pushed in a digital format uh, since COVID. That's kind of just the way that that the world is working these days. Um, but one day we're going to get back to normal and, and, and be, you know, back at it in person. And we're looking forward to that day. Um, I wish I could say more about these subjects, but I, I'm just trying to touch, I'm just trying to touch everything. Um, bull moose committee. So th th this past fiscal year, we have also had spectacular success, um, from a legislative standpoint. Um, and you know, look, we're, we're not, we're not the wealthiest organization. I'm just going to call a spade a spade here. Um, we don't have the support of a couple billionaires that just say, go run and do whatever you want. Um, but a couple years ago, we realized that what we do have is an absolute army of engaged and committed members, much like the folks in this call tonight. And what that translates to is a very loud voice at the Capitol building. Um, and, and so, you know, as a result, we, we sort of we kind of put our heads together and put a little bit more effort and energy into thinking about how to most effectively, uh, uh, you know, swing our weight around a little bit. And, and that's when, you know, it, it comes down to the Bull Moose Committee. Um, and we have to give a lot of credit to Bull Moose. Uh, these folks, you know, chaired by Barb Sheedlow, who's an absolute rock star. Uh, this committee exists to help our chapters uh, our chapter members, uh, you know, stay updated and engaged on local, state, and national legislation. So these are all volunteers, some just like you. Um, and, 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 you know, I just want you to keep this committee in mind because th they exist to be that, that liaison. And um, we really do have a lot of power here. Um, so I wanted to introduce folks to, I'm not going to name everybody, but um, I kind of think it's hilarious that 
in the middle of this recording, Ross Bruno just joins late there in the corner and he just like steps into a bunch of people waving and smiling at him. And he just goes, they just right along with it. It was great. Um, but these, these folks, I can't, I can't speak highly enough. Um, there's so many uh, bright, dedicated conservationists in this group that recognize the same power that I'm, that I'm mentioning today. And they're, they're totally committed. Um, so uh, relating to our successes in the legislative arena in the recent past, um, the Great American Outdoors Act and the Land and, Land and Water Conservation Fund contained therein um, uh, reached a full and permanent funding on, what was it? Yeah, August 4th of, of 2020 when, when the president signed it into law. Um, if, if you haven't delved into this, I would encourage you to Google it. But uh, the, the bottom line is this was a, an enormous win for our mission um, because the Land and Water Conservation Fund um, really, really plows a, a lot of capital into the things that we care about. I mean, it's, the, it, it, it's responsible for funding uh, Rocky Mountain National Park. It's responsible for, for, uh, for the, the maintenance of, of um, you know, some of the most wild places that we love in this state. Um, so, so activating our very deep membership uh, bench, if you will, um, you know, of course we can't take sole credit for this, but um, um, activating those folks to call and write in um, turned out to be incredibly lucrative or, or, or uh, it, it bore a lot of fruit. Um, and we actually were fortunate enough to have Barb, our, our committee chair, along with Corinne Doctor and David Nickham fly into DC to meet with legislators and representatives and, um, and you know, generally uh, represent Colorado TU in DC, which was spectacular. Um, but we've had a lot of really sort of grassroots participation with this and it's been spectacular. Um, other quick notable wins as I'm watching my time here, cause I do have a lot to get through. Um, Proposition DD, um, you know, this helped to fund the Colorado water plan by, by taxing sports betting. And it actually turned out to be a pretty close um, decision at the end. Uh, but it was, you know, the, the Bull Moose Committee went through this whole process of, you know, should we or should we not support this? And, and it directly related to our mission. So we decided to get behind it. And sure enough, there's some more money for the Colorado Water Plan. Um, HB 1157 was loaned water for in-stream in flows, um, uh, which allowed uh, loaned water to be essentially used for improving the health of a stream. And it extends the, the annual uh, limitation to, I believe, I wanna say 10 years, um, but also a, a, a big piece of legislation in the past. And then the, the CORE Act, the Colorado Outdoor Recreation and Economy Act, um, which protects something like 400,000 acres of public land, um, made it through the House, and uh, it, uh, we're kind of halfway there. We need to get it through the Senate for it to, for it to work out. But, um, you know, we've had some really, really good success, and we have, we have all of our members to thank for that. You know, I know so many people have participated so thoroughly, not just on this call. We're talking hundreds and hundreds more. Um, so we can't thank those, those people enough. Um, <clears throat> obviously another key initiative being, you know, trout unlimited, um, is native trout and gold medal water. And I'm also going to cruise through, through this, but, um, bottom line is that 65,000 greenbacks were released into Colorado streams by 200 of our volunteers. Um, that's something to be proud of. If that's, uh, if that's not satisfactory, I don't know what is, um, but some updates on a variety of creeks specifically. Uh, Rock Creek has has a final barrier that, and it's completed, that secured eight miles of streams for greenback uh, habitat. Um, the next process there, I believe, unless it has already been completed, which it may, um, is to remove non-natives. Um, Himes Creek, the Five Rivers chapter, was involved in securing some in-stream flow rights for San Juan cutthroats, and I'm definitely going to get into more of that later because um, that's pretty exciting stuff. Um, Herman and Dry Gulch uh, just finished their final year of greenback reintroduction, which is mind boggling to me because when that first started, it felt like yesterday. But um, yeah, that's the final year of greenback reintroduction on those creeks. Um, and then Abrams Creek uh, was a perfect example of a sort of one TU situation um, where, uh, where National actually got involved 
and flows um, were retained for Colorado River cutthroat trout and improving that habitat. Um, so we're thankful to all of the volunteers and of course, Colorado Parks and Wildlife couldn't do it without them um, for participating in, in those projects. Um, the, the, this is, man, this is exciting too. The Sand Creek uh, Rio Grande cutthroat, this is hot off the press stuff. Uh, and when it comes to, when it comes to um, a unique fishery, this one is kind of top of the list in my view. Um, Kevin Terry is the Rio Grande uh, Basin Project Manager, and he kind of took the lead on this thing. Um, and the Upper Sand Creek, as of early September, has been fully treated for non-natives, and it required literally moving mountains. I mean, it has been it has been quite a project. Um, but there and there are a ton of people to to thank on this thing. Kevin Rogers of CPW guided most of the research. Uh, behind it. Um, Mark Seaton and the San Luis Valley chapter were instrumental, raised some money. Andrew Todd of, of Running, Ri Running Rivers raised over $20,000 for this project. And a 44-person team country setting with helicopters, etc. And, and, and got this first portion done. Team cut, cut trails and flagged routes. They, they identified seeps and, and springs and installed gauge systems, monitored stream flows. It's, um, it's one that we're really, we're really proud of. So congratulations to Kevin and to Mark um, down in the San Luis Valley. Okay, so let's, oh, I'm doing okay on time. This is, this is fantastic actually. <clears throat> All right, so let's, uh, Let's discuss where we are and, and what we're doing going forward. Um, our priority initiatives remain the Colorado Water Plan and the Basin Roundtables and Stream Management Plans that are, are sort of contained therein. Um, uh, our, uh, when it comes to Basin Roundtables, I, I would just encourage you, if you're tuning in, um, uh, this is kind of where it all starts and and our value as trout unlimited is that we have this this sort of dispersion of members um, that are all around the state so i would encourage you to join a round table or simply start your own discussion around this stuff um, because it really is our responsibility to uphold um, our end of the colorado water plan which if you're not familiar with the colorado water plan it essentially is a it's a sort of three-legged stool between municipalities, agriculture, and then the environmental health of watersheds. And obviously we play in, in, in the health category. So if you're interested in this, I would encourage you to reach out to Dan Omasta. Um, and he, he, he's, he's uh, incredibly knowledgeable on the subject. So um, it's something that we, need, we do need to focus on going forward. And it does require sort of that, that army of, of volunteers that we have. Um, Native trout, the, the focus will, will shift a bit to the San Juan cutthroat because it's such an exciting project, but it doesn't mean that the greenbacks um, will be finished. It's just that San Juan is a very, very special story and we're gonna get behind that one. Um, conservation advocacy, I don't even have anything to say on it because I just know the Bull Moose Committee is gonna, is gonna take that thing and, uh, and, and, and just absolutely run with it. Um, I, I'll get into the, some specifics uh, later in this presentation about what we really need to be aware of. Um, but bottom line is we have some really spectacular people that are driving that ship. Youth education, again, you know, we'll, we'll continue to serve uh, in a digital format, but when things open back up, uh, the floodgates are going to open from, from CTU and, and we're ready for, for Jeff to get back at it in an in-person in, in -person, uh, kind of position. Um, and then as far as just chapter engagement and and general growth. Um, uh, Cam Chandler in his, in his previous uh, uh, service as, as president definitely made us bigger, stronger, and faster. And you'll remember him mentioning that. And you know that's something that we're going to adhere to. We're gonna continue on that trajectory, but we have to, we have to retain that same attitude in this COVID, COVID environment, um, which is a little bit more difficult. And I think 
from where I sit, we can see COVID as, as this sort of, I don't know, insurmountable hurdle or obstruction. Um, or we can choose to just keep pushing. And really what I've seen from the executive committee and from staff is that we're, 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 not, we're not downshifting at all. If anything, we're going more full throttle. Um, and I'm super proud of that. I'm very excited about it. Um, but a, a, a couple of just kind of, kind of uh, FYIs, um, National is updating their strategic plan and we will also be doing a sort of a deeper reassessment of all things CTU. Um, we'll be reevaluating our strategic plan um, as it relates to the state level, of course. And we'll look at our initiatives with a sort of a fresh set of eyes and maybe some, um, some help outside of the organization. And then we'll, we're just really gonna double down on what's working and, and cut back on some things that are a hindrance. And if I could summarize the, any, uh, I guess, preliminary conversations as far as the strategic plan goes, uh, that would be it. Um, our, 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 our gala, uh, 2020, I can't tell you how fortunate we were to have barely completed our annual fundraiser and river, stu river stewardship gala in March before COVID hit. I look back on that in hindsight and think, man, we, we really lucked out. Um, so thank you to the sponsors and the attendees at that event. Um, you know, we, we, we raised a good chunk of change there and um, it's really unfortunate, but in 2021, we're gonna have to do it in a virtual sense. Even if we do have a vaccine, um, it, it, we just decided as an executive committee that it would probably be, I don't know, it would be smarter, it would be more respectful of folks' health if we, uh, if we did it uh, in, a, in a virtual sense um, for 2021. So, so tune in, spread the word on that. Um, I actually think it's going to be spectacular, um, but fingers crossed. We'll, we'll see. We're, we're still working on it. Um, and then, you know, one TU, one TU has been a conversation in what I'll term the, the Chandler administration, uh, for a variety of years or a number of years. And, um, I guess for me, it only hit me, I don't know, a couple of years ago, how critical it actually is, because we really are stronger when we more smoothly connect our chapter members and leaders with the state and then subsequently national and, and the expertise and the firepower that they can provide. One TU will sort of be reflected in a bit of a change in, in uh, the style of fundraising that will uh, that we'll utilize this year. We're, we're going to try and cut down on pestering folks um, with uh, just an incessant amount of asks <laughs> for donations. Um, so we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to do a sort of partnership there. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll of course continue with, with the CAST program. And, you know, I mentioned that because CAST relates directly to the health of a chapter um, uh, being sort of that like keystone component to an effective state TU, and then obviously an effective state TU affects a national TU. So um, we, we, we do need to focus on chapter health, chapter presidents, you know, if you're tuning in, really it's no joke, you, 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 uh, you play a critical role in our success and we can't thank you enough for your leadership um, and just keep, keep going during COVID, just keep, keep, keep your head up. Um, and as a sort of, oh boy, as a sort of mesh of the Colorado water plan and one to you, I wanted to share a quick clip uh, that I made of, of the Windy Gap Reservoir. Um, I may have to stop sharing very quickly, but um, we'll see. Yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing real quick. I'm glad I did that. All righty. Yeah. It's a little dark, <laughs> but I'm standing in front of the Windy Gap Reservoir with all kinds of cars cruising behind us, which is just downstream of the Fraser River, the confluence of the Fraser River and the North Fork of the Colorado River. And for nearly, nearly two decades, National Trout Unlimited staff, Colorado Trout Unlimited staff, and local supporters consisting of the Headwaters chapter and specifically Kirk Clanky 
have helped to, to drum up support for a bypass that would reconnect the Upper Colorado River to the tune of 20 miles worth of the Upper, upper Colorado River um, around the Windy Gap Reservoir. Now, the Windy Gap Reservoir was established in 1985, and it is an absolutely critical source of water for northern water. Ruined it, man. Yeah. Um, over the past, you know, two decades, there has been there has been this 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 drumming up of support to 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 create this 9.6 million dollar project that will dramatically increase the health of this river. River, and not only is this, you know, a wonderful example of 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 the determination and resilience of a group of folks like the Headwaters chapter. It's also a perfect indication of, of how in Colorado we utilize the concept of one TU, meaning we have our Headwaters chapter that are the boots on the ground, that are the first eyes on this watershed, that then come to, to the state staff that can provide support for a project like this, but then we can also go to the national level and provide some really, some really big guns that can come in and help, help establish or, um, um, you know, create a, a conservation project that reconnects, you know, a namesake river and one that we all that we all adore. Um, as a sort of cherry on top, this section will also uh, create uh, a, one new mile of fishable river on the Colorado. So if we have macro invertebrates and trout moving up and downstream, this is a better fishery. And we have both the, the chapters, the state and national to thank for it. I'm, uh, I'm assuming you could hear that. I hope not. I hope we didn't just have 33 minutes of, of silence. Um, really, it was a pleasure a few weekends ago to, uh, to spend some time at the Windy Gap Reservoir with Kirk Clanky, um, and learn about uh, a little bit more about those, those projects to come and, and one to you, uh, it really is a, uh, a critical component to how we operate and where our strength, um, originates. So as I mentioned previously, uh, I'm particularly excited about, uh, this, the San Juan cutthroat trout, um, you know, again, of, of course, greenbacks are not, uh, are not a second class species by any means. Um, uh, but to give folks some background on this, this was a fish that we thought was extinct, um, completely. And when, uh, when wildfire threatened this Creek that was, uh, near, um, Wolf Creek, Colorado Parks and Wildlife saved 58 fish. And after extensive genetic testing, they realized, hey, like this is this is the former the formerly extinct San Juan cutthroat. So now um, we're sort of shifting our focus into and this just kind of just fell in our lap this this moment of opportunity, and uh, we're shifting our focus into reestablishing them into their into their native range. I think it is it is such an exciting story. Um, and it's one that we should that we should talk about far more frequently. Um, and you know the, the process. Um, I'm not an aqua aquatic biologist, um, but as far as I know, the process will be very similar to that of of the the greenback restoration. So there will be ample opportunity for folks to to volunteer their their time and and expertise and dollars in in order to reestablish this fish in the state. Super fun project. Um, now. I mentioned advocacy stuff. Um, uh, a quick word on Good Samaritan legislation. Keep an eye out for this. This was this is an also a very exciting one. Um, this is something Ty Churchwell has done a great job of of keeping us all updated on. Um, and National TU uh, CEO Chris Wood has brought a variety of of the CEOs of mining companies to the table to discuss this legislation. Um, which would essentially reduce the the liability of organizations that wish to clean up abandoned mines and colorado is a perfect place for this um you know just it, the snake river here in in summit county is a perfect example whether or not that's a candidate for actual reclamation i don't know um 
but we have a variety of abandoned mines that that um, you know are seeping acid mine drainage into our streams, and it's something that we have our hands a bit tied on uh, just due to legislation that simply doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and you know, I would say it, it really is a, a sort of uh, a vote of confidence that the Trout Unlimited CEO is the person that industry is sitting down with um, in order to discuss how we can get this done. And what, I, what I'm insinuating by that is that Colorado, or I'm sorry, that Trout Unlimited remains a nonpartisan, a, uh, not a litigious um, industry demonizing organization. And that is, it has become so much more clear to me that is a reason for our historical success, both within the state and at a national level. So the fact that that industry says, hey, you know, Chris Wood, that's who we want at the table. Um, that's the reasonable, you know, eco-pragmatist, if you will, that's going to help us, you know, come to, come to a, an agreement that makes sense to get the job done. Um, so, uh, you know, the core act I mentioned previously, we're going to have uh, the kind of second push there. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but keep your, keep your eyes and ears open for it. Um, also keep your eyes and ears open for the clean water for all act. Um, uh, and then, you know, uh, well, I guess I'll just, I'll just tell you about, um, I recently had the opportunity to float the Colorado river when it was nice and low and clear. Um, with two cutthroat members, Peter King and Rich Huss. And the subject of politics came up, um, politics within CTU came up while we were on the boat. We were just chatting about it. And it should be noted that we as a 501c3 are free to endorse and advocate for, I'm sorry, free to advocate, not endorse, advocate for particular pieces of legislation um, but we are prohibited from endorsing any candidates. And, uh, you know, I thought to myself, that is really part of our culture. Um, yes, of course, it's it, our 501c3 status with the IRS prohibits us from endorsing any candidates. But we are, we're still that organization that has roughly an equal right and left member base. And in this day and age, uh, I just think, I think it's so spectacular that we can we can be that one place that brings both sides of, of both both kinds of folks into the same the same mission and you know it's no secret that we're going through a pretty tumultuous time in our country culturally and you know we're still the place that the right wing hunter can 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 coalesce with the as I always say with the bolder vegan hippie over um, over. The, the, uh, our shared mission and our shared cause. And I am so proud of that. I can't even think of anything more important to stand behind in this day and age. And sometimes that ground that we stand on in order to bring both sides together seems like it's kind of eroding beneath our feet and we have to hold that ground. I sent an email to the Cutthroat chapter about this same thing the other day. We absolutely must continue to hold that ground. And the, the interesting component to this is that I believe if, that if we do sh hold that ground, we avail ourselves of the opportunity for tremendous growth because there are so many people out there that are, that are sick of the extremes, that want a place that they, can, that, they can, that they can exercise what they feel is very important to them, which is a cold, clean, healthy watershed. And if we remain patient and we remain focused on specific legislation and we, we remain uh, the culture that's accepting of all kinds of people. It doesn't matter what kind of what kind of heritage you have. It doesn't matter what kind of political affiliation you have. If we remain accepting of all those kinds of people, we can just have have clean water as our common denominator, and and we can really add to our membership and to our to our effectiveness as an organization. Um, and you know, going forward, our our job will only become more important as populations on the front range continue to explode. So I would just say to folks that are that are tuning in, you know, tell your friends, tell 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 everyone that we are the place for pragmatic science-based resolution to to cold water conservation. And um, 
And I think we can really start to grow that way. Um, I'm, 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 I want to leave some time for, for questions. I, I knew I would go over, I knew I would go longer than I would, or that I intended to, but, um, a couple of quick notes, you know, um, I'm, I'm really big on, on culture and, you know, I think we have, um, we have this, this sort of mentality where, where maybe, maybe members and chapter leaders sort of wait for someone to tell them what to do. And I would just say, if you're listening tonight, um, if you have an idea and it serves a TU mission, just go for it. You know, it, you'd be surprised at how quickly your chapter and how quickly the state will get behind you to support you. So I, I just don't hesitate. Don't, don't wait for folks to, to tell you how to get the job done. If you see something that needs to happen in your watershed, go and do it. Um, and I, I want to relay a quick story that I heard from Chris Wood on a national call the other day um, that relates to it's, it's finally cool to be a conservationist because he mentioned um, a Five Rivers coordinator, Five Rivers being our uh, university level um, Trout Unlimited chapter, essentially. And uh, she, she had set up fishing meetups and she had five anglers show up. She set up river cleanups and she had 25 people show up. So what does that tell you? And in, in a sense, the culture around conservation is shifting. And I think we're in a perfect position to capture the folks um, that, I don't know, don't necessarily obsessively swing a fly rod like, like me <laughs> um, and, that, and, and just, just really care about an ecosystem. So um, as you as you proceed at the chapter level, I would just say remain open to the possibility um, of, of different kinds of people joining joining your organization. And I guess just kind of a a closing note on culture. Um, I'm really big on, on also on on humor and humility. And if we bring that to to the state level, hopefully it can kind of trickle down into the chapter level. And I would encourage folks to not be uh, not necessarily be that 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 uh, the the big the big ego angler that that is sort of intimidating in a fly shop, but be that um, be the humble caretaker of a watershed. Make a make a joke every now and then in your in your in your chapter, and I, I think that will serve us well um, culturally, and I think it will pervade, and and I think we'll be more attractive to to even you know the younger generations. Um, uh, with which we must replace ourselves. Um, so I guess, you know, in, in closing, I think this is my last slide. Yep, it is. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an honor to, to advocate for, for policy under the TU name. It's an honor to be a part of this executive committee. I, I know I didn't mention um, so many people that, pay, that play such an integral role in, in what we do. Um, but uh, as we proceed through this first ever digital rendezvous, I hope you find it informative, and I hope you I hope you feel I hope you feel inspired, and I hope your passion for cold water conservation is just continually stoked. Um, because you know, again, we are on we're on a high growth trend, thankfully, but we, but our job only becomes. Uh, more important in the years to come. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of this family and, um, you know, enjoy all of the sessions that you're, that you're able to attend. So I think I can, I think I can stop sharing and. Uh, hey, Matt, we got a question to... in chat. Oh, Do you want shit. me to read? I can tell it to you. Oh, I got it. Okay, cool. Uh, just okay, cool. Um, the uh, thank you for telling me that the video works. I was sitting here just like, uh, I really hope you guys aren't looking at at a screen with no sound. Um, strategic plans, yeah. So the original, uh, the original, and we do have Tom Jones on the line, so we might we might just tap him. But the original, um, the original end date was late September. Um, it's been, it, it's going through a variety of processes, I believe, and, and the final national strategic plan um, is set to be 
completed in early January. And um, if I didn't make it clear, our own strategic plan will sort of revolve around that because why reinvent the wheel, right? If they've, uh, you know, hired some brilliant consultants, we can sort of lean on their work. Um, so ours, hopefully, I don't know, a few months afterward, I would guess. Um, and I will try and really push the pedal on, on, on getting it done as soon as possible because the more quickly it's finished, the more quickly we can, we can execute. So thanks for the question, Mickey. Tom, anything to add on that? Now, I, this is David. I was just going to note that uh, the uh, as part of the board meeting on the uh, 24th, when we have uh, some of the workshops there, um, Mac Cunningham on the National Board of Trustees is uh, organizing a session there that will be sharing some of what's coming together in that national plan as well. So for those who want to learn more about that, uh, you'll have that chance uh, a couple Saturdays from now. That's right. Thanks, David. Uh, the only thing I would say, uh, Matt, is that um, they've made great progress on the strategic plan. I was pretty concerned for a while uh, that it wasn't coming together, but it really has in the last uh, about three weeks. Um, the thing that I would ask everybody to do is to tune into that session. And if you've got questions or comments or con criticisms or concerns, share them. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I besieged Chris Wood with comments um, to the point that I <clears throat> eventually told him that if he gets tired of this, I promise to shut up. <clears throat> and he's listened to them all and he's made serious changes in the plan. So I would tell you that he does listen. And so if you get, if you have comments, share them. Uh, we're going to have a lot of people on. Uh, uh, Bernard Bailey is going to be on, who's chairman of the board. Uh, Chris. A lot of folks will be in that session, so uh, that's your that's your shot to uh, emphasize things that, are, that about which you are concerned. Good deal, thanks, Tom. All righty. I see that Barbara no raised her hand. No, that was the clap, supposed to be the clapping. Um, she's, she's cheering Matt. <laughs> she's cheering Matt on. <laughs> At the end of Claps this, for Matt. That was a virtual clap. It's thunderous, right, Matt? <laughs> thunderous. I can feel it from here. Thanks, Barb. <laughs> All right. Hey, look, we... Uh, we kept it we kept it below an hour if if we if we cut it off right now which is incredibly rare for this group <laughs> um any other questions guys good deal hey thank you for tuning in um enjoy enjoy the rest of rendezvous i know we have we have a lot of pretty spectacular sessions coming up and um you know, engage, ask a bunch of, ask a bunch of questions and soak it all in because it, it, uh, it looks pretty spectacular to me. So, um, David, I don't know anything else. Just, uh, again, thank you to our sponsors who are helping make all this possible. And thank you to all of you for uh, signing on to join us. Hope to see some of you, uh, through the rest of the next couple of weeks, including tomorrow night, uh, uh, got the panel led by Joel Johnson, uh, on engaging, uh, um, black indigenous people of color in conservation and angling. So I hope to see many of you there tomorrow. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it, right? Nice to see you, you see your faces if it's just a photo even. <laughs> Take care.